everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today we're going to be making Hamish's thespian shirt as shown here um, and it's quite an interesting shirt because there's a very um, unusual way of folding the fabric in order to get this almost one piece shirt um, and because the sleeves and, and the shirt body are actually attached together. But before we do that, I just wanted to talk to you about the actual um, design of the shirt itself, because if I show you the picture perhaps on the remake kit, which is this one just here, we're gonna get glare on there. Let me get my picture from the book instead and see if we can work it out from there. If we have a look here on this shirt, one of the things that I really liked was this lovely big necktie. Now, look at that and then look at the one that I've already made and can you see how thin and less impactful the one is in real life and I don't know about you but I like things to look the right the way that they were supposed to in the book um, and so I was a little bit disappointed with this one and I followed the instructions perfectly in order to to see how that was made but I'm just feeling a bit underwhelmed. So when I'm talking about making this with you, I'm gonna to talk to you about how we can alter the pattern in order to make this um, necktie a little bit more full, a little bit more impactful, um, and certainly so that it can look like it does in the book. Um, and I'll show you how I kind of got to the conclusion that maybe the pattern's been altered slightly from where it was originally drafted and this version of the of the necktie um, to this one and how I kind of worked out that that's what had gone wrong rather than it actually being my sewing that has got it wrong and that's always good to know how to change things how to evaluate things and move things around so what I'm going to do now is because I've I know I've already got one here but I'm actually making a, another one for my friend so I've already made a second Hamish um, and well my friend saw it and really liked it so I've already made one thespian shirt so this one will be mine or I'll make a separate neck chief and just get rid of this one and make a new one to go with it for this one but for the second one I'm going to alter the pattern myself so that it make oh got some fur from Hamish in my mouth I'm um, gonna make it so that it's 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 longer because this one if you look goes down to his waist in the picture and this one definitely doesn't um, and also it's thicker and that one isn't so yeah I'm a bit underwhelmed at this moment in time so we're going to make some changes so if you don't want to make any changes all of the construction will be exactly the same but what we'll do first is just talk about the pattern and tracing it off first to give us a base pattern and then I'll show you what changes I make and then you'll be able to fast forward to the end of the video or I'll sneak a little picture in here for you so that you can have a look and um, see how we've changed it and then decide whether you want to make those changes now or whether you want to wait until the end. Um, and just to say that um, the original design for Hamish and for his clothes, um, the credit for that belongs to Sarah Peel of Cool Crafting and I'll pop their website up here for you where you can go and buy kits and the books and everything um, Luna Lapin related um, and of which Hamish is one of Luna Lapin's friends. So just wanted to give correct credit to Sarah I'm just recreating these videos so that you've got a a video visual way of learning rather than having to try and interpret the um, books and as I say the, the folding method for this shirt did give me a little bit of a head scratch at first but I can show you how to do that and, and, and we'll work work our way through that so with no further ado I'll turn the camera down and we'll get started so firstly, let me just show you on the book. So we've got the, the tie here going all the way down past his waist and also having a certain thickness. Now we can see just by putting my Hamish next to the picture of the Hamish, there's a huge difference in the size there. But also if I put the end of one tie onto the end of the book, perhaps onto that one, you can see that it's only a smidge wider than actually in the book. Hopefully you can see that if I just take that up the picture whoops like that can you see underneath so it's not like it's double the width or anything like that so that tells me as well that the pattern was actually re um, reduced down in width and that's what possibly has happened so now we've done all of that and established all of that let me now get round to talking about the pattern because yeah that's just 
That's just not doing it for me, right? Okay, I'll stop moaning. Okay, so you're going to need um, your book, um, and it, Hamish is actually in Lunar Lapping, A Year of Making, and he's on the front cover just here um, in his lovely kilt set. And we're going to then need to go to the back pages here in the book. And you're going to need page 134, which is the tunic and then also the necktie then as well. So let's get those um, pattern pieces ready. And what I've done is I've taken a, a larger piece of um, tracing paper and popped it over the top of my pattern. I've then traced around it. Here we go, excuse the neighbour's dog barking. Um, I've traced around it, copied all of the, the um, elements on, and you can see there's a fold line here and a fold line there, which is very unusual for one piece of fabric. And you can also see that I did cut out the pattern piece at exactly the right shape and size for the tie on here as well. Okay, and I cut out two of those because we need to cut two on the fold, so I'd cut two, two pieces out anyway. Okay. So that's what you need to do. So once you've got your pattern pieces traced off, you're going to need to go to your Make Me Kit. And if you remember, the Make Me Kit, sorry, the Remake Kit doesn't have the pattern in it because we've already got that in our um, book. But if you've never made this before, you might have to get a Make Me Kit and that would include the pattern if you've not got the book. And then what we need to do then is open this up to get our white fabric out. And you don't need any other notions apart from your pattern, your fabric and some thread. And then once we've got this ready, what I want you to do is take this over to your ironing board and give this a really good steam and press because it's got some packing creases in there and we want to get those creases out before we start. So let's. I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to take those um, creases out now with the um with the iron and i'll meet you back here okay so here's we've got my nice piece of cotton lawn all nicely pressed and if you're wondering how i managed to get all those creases out quite so nicely i did use some spray starch um and i do find that that does work well just to get the really um deep packing creases out there's one or two left but on the whole that's come up quite nicely so the way that we actually are going to fold this fabric, and there's there's a couple of ways of, there, there, well, there's one way of doing it, because I, what I've found is that it isn't quite long enough to get two out of, which is a real shame, um, because that would have been lovely. But what I've done first of all is, so there are a couple of ways of doing it. The, the way that I think it's done in the book is that you just fold it completely in half, and then you fold it completely over the other way. So you get your piece of fabric folded into four. So that's just as you would, as if you were folding a sheet, you just fold it in half first and then half in the width. That then gives you two folded edges just here and a one double folded edge just here. And then the idea is that your shirt then fits into the corner just there. But you know about me and my lack, my dislike of wasted fabric, and that's quite a lot of wasted fabric there. So the way that I suggest that we do it is very similar. So I've kept the selvage edge just there so I can use that for knowing the grain. But I folded it in half over first so that it's roughly just a little bit longer than the, the shirt length is. Because if you look at our pattern, this is our sleeve here and then we've got like a slightly wider edge down here with on a slant and that's actually the front. So I've on the front going down, I've then just folded that fabric so that it's on grain as much as possible. So that we've got that fold there nicely and that the pattern piece fits down just over the edge. Then what I've done is then folded it over again, not given as a corner, but now I want to fold it so that it's wide enough just to fit that shirt on the edge. because then if we then attach this shirt with a fold on one side and the fold on the other, like so, take it up slightly, that actually gives us then all of this fabric here almost in one piece. We're gonna use some for the tie, 
but it gives us a much bigger piece in order to, to save. So I have got my pattern piece upside down. Let me just turn it round for you. So let me just show you again this way round in case I've, I've confused anybody. So I turned it over first, the length of the pattern piece, plus a little bit, just to give me a bit of insurance. And then I've then folded it over the, in the opposite direction so that I can fit the length on, but also the sleeve on the width. So that's how that's going to fit in the corner there. Can you see the neckline is there, sleeve and what have you. So let me just turn it round now so that it's actually work facing towards me because I want to make sure that these folded edges are right on top of each other and that I've got my pattern pieces right on that fold. I'm not so bothered about the body because that's going to give us a little bit extra kind of width if we need it. But once I've got that ready, I don't want my sleeves to be different widths. So make sure those folds for your sleeves are absolutely bang on on top of each other. And then I've just put a pin in just to hold it on that orientation. So this is just to help us just sort of get our placement right. Then I've gone down to the bottom here and then I've, which is the hem, centre front hem. And then I've put a pin in there, which then holds it in place. Just also make sure that both edges on this edge double fold that you can't see, this one's quite easy because you've got the gap there for the double fold. But on this length here, just make sure that that, that fabric underneath is tucked right into this corner just here, this folded edge, just to make sure that that's right. And then when you're ready, just pop your pins in to hold that still for you so that we'll be able to cut it out. So we'll just pin along here. And then going up to the side just here as well. So that we've got our, our piece. Now I'm not gonna worry about the tie at the moment. We're just gonna cut out the shirt because we've got plenty for the tie. So we don't need to worry about that just yet. So let's just get our scissors now and then we can cut out this, this piece of fabric. So as I say, you. Uh, you can wind the video back. I was going to repeat myself, but I'm trying not to repeat myself and save your sanity and mine. And instead, let's just cut out our fabric. Once we've cut that out, don't forget to cut around your little neck edge as well. Okay. So then we've got a couple of things that we need to do. So we've got our, our main shirt out. This is our sleeve. That's our neck edge. And this is the, the angled side here because those two lines are parallel for the sleeve. This um, edge here is angled for the wider part for the hem just on the neck edge there just make a little notch front and back so I've gone through both pieces of fabric there but at this point here just take out your first pin separate the two pieces of fabric and then just going through one piece of fabric just put a notch at the centre front Okay, because you don't need to not mark the centre back, but that's going to help us when we have to then split this down the front. So let's just put that to one side for the moment, because the next thing we're going to talk about now is our necktie, because these are our pattern pieces for the necktie, and we want to make sure that we end up with it the right size. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, let's have a look at our very handsome model here, Mr Hamish. And let's get a ruler or a seam gauge, which I've got somewhere. And what I want to do is kind of guesstimate how wide we want this finished neckchief to be. We know we want it to be wider than it is, and we also want it to be longer than it is. So let's go for width first. So I think that if that was an inch wide finished length, I'd be happier with that. So one inch is going to be our finished width. So let me just get a pen and write this down on a piece of paper. Let's use a bit of tissue paper. So we want one inch finished. 
The way that this necktie is, is done is that these two edges here are when they've when they're opened out because these are both cut on the fold they're then joined on the long on the um folded edge and then this pattern here is then folded in half in order to give us the finished width less the seam allowance quarter of an inch seam allowance so then we know that if we're trying to get a finished edge of an inch we know we're going to have a quarter of an inch lost on one side and a quarter of an inch lost on the other side and we're also going to have this in half so if we look at this now so if we lose a quarter of an inch that's um, three quarters of an inch at the moment if we lose a quarter of an inch on that bit we know that's only half an inch finished and that tallies up with what I've got at the moment we can't just double this pattern because if we double this pattern, we'll have four lots of seam allowance on it and we only need the two. So when we're drawing our new pattern piece, let's go down that way because we've got plenty of room, haven't we? I'm just going to draw some lines. So I'm just drawing some lines for to mark our original pattern piece. And that was the end, okay. So we know that we want to have a finished width of an inch and this is folded over so we're now going to need to have two inches for our pattern piece for our finish because that's going to be the finished edge cut in half but then we need another quarter of an inch for one side of the seam allowance and quarter of an inch the other so two and a half inches is going to be our new width for our pattern piece let's draw a line across there i hope this is all making sense to you it makes sense to me Oh, pen doesn't want to work very well. So then I'm going over to here now. So let's just measure two and a half inches out here. That'll give me another reference point to, to follow. And if you're nervous about doing this, I always say, do it on a scrap piece of fabric first. You know, especially when you're working with a kit, you don't want to have too much. So that's going to be our new width. So have a look at the how that compares with this one because we want to have that extra width to make our neckerchief or our tie neck even longer and um, wider so we know we're going to lose just to recap we know we're going to lose quarter of an inch down here for a seam allowance and this side as well so then if we measure in between those two marks we've got two inches and we know that two inches folded in half is going to be one inch and that should be better so this is two two and a half inches wide the other thing that we know is that the original length, we look back at our very handsome model, um, isn't long enough either. I want it to come down to his waist. So I've got this one tied round and then coming down to the front. So let's just measure how long we want this to be. So I'm going to add probably another two inches onto the length of this, this side here. And because it's from a half, we know because the pattern here there's two of those that are then sewn together to make it longer. Then we know that that's going to need, yeah, because each of them needs to be that. So we, I'm going to add another two inches on. It might end up slightly long, but I'd rather have it slightly long and then we can then alter it than I would have it too short. So I'm just extending this pattern piece by two inches and I'll just extend that two and a half inch line up and this one up and then join that across. So whilst you might be shouting at the screen and thinking, but two inches is too long because we've got this pattern piece. And where's the other pattern piece gone? We have to cut two of these. So that two inches is going to be on both. But we've got two ends to the tie that we're using. And I want both of them to be two inches long. So that's why I'm thinking that that will still be right. All will be revealed at the end. And you'll have seen a sneak previews to see whether I've got it right or not. But I'll put some notes on the screen here if I've altered the pattern at all. So that you don't have to wait to the very end to know whether I got it right or not. So this is now our pattern piece. So this here is going to be our fold. This here is going to be our cut line. 
and I've extended the existing pattern to be two and a half inches wide and I'll tell you the measurement in the end of the last one. So now the end one is approximately eight and a half inches long or 21 and a half centimetres. It's probably 21 centimetres. Yeah, it's 21 centimetres long now, which is fine. So to cut out two of this pattern, because we want to be able to have two of these, I'm just going to fold my paper in half, make sure the ends match up. And then by holding them together, I'm just going to now cut out through both pieces at the same time. And pattern alterations are fairly simple. It's just, it's just trying to work out your seam allowances, really, to make sure that you've got all of those covered. But that's why I couldn't just du duplicate, just double the pattern piece, because it would, it would perhaps have been a little bit too big then. So let me just mark this one up. So this is one of two tie at uh, necktie. And this one here is two of two necktie. And let me just make sure that we put that fold edge on the end there so that we remember. So if we compare now our original pattern piece to the new one, we can see how much bigger it is. But this should then work, she says. And you'll know already if it does or not. So let me just move those out of the way. So all I'm going to do now is just fold my fabric again, whichever way you want to do it. We need a fold. This little piece here might probably be enough. We want to fold the fabric so that it's just enough. I mean, if you've got a quilting ruler, you can just cut it out with your quilting ruler if you wanted to, which wouldn't be on your rotary cutter, which wouldn't be a bad bad option. We've got a lovely nice piece of fabric to be using and I'm pleased that we have because it's meant that we can make this alteration to the necktie and get it more in, in keeping with what's actually shown in the book. So all I'm going to do now is just pin these pattern pe new pattern pieces onto my fabric and cut those out and I'll meet you back here and then we'll carry on with the regular construction of this. And don't forget, you can just, if you've got a straight line between your two pattern pieces, you can just put them straight up to each other as well. You have to still pin both sides, but then when you snip, you just snip in between and you've got one cut going between the two. So it works quite nicely. Um, yeah, and then we're just on to just on to the general construction steps as it would be whether you were using the thinner tie or whether you were wanting to, you've changed your pattern and wanted to do the wider tie. Okay back to you in a few moments. So the first thing we're going to do is take our pattern piece off our main shirt and just remember that orientation. So you've got two straight lines for your sleeve and you've got a little diagonal line for your bottom edge because the first thing I'm going to want you to do is just fold this out and if you've, if you've done folded your, your um, dimensions correctly then you'll have something that resembles the shape with a, with a round circle and if you can look we've got a crease along this front edge here um, and the back edge where you've got those diagonal points out. So these are the, these are the sleeves. I've laid it out so the sleeves are going across and then the, the, the diagonal sides are here and here because the first thing that we need to do is split this shirt down one edge. So where we made the notch on the centre front at the hemline, we're going to match that up with the centre front at the neckline as well. On the back, we've just got a notch at the centre back line we haven't got one at the hem so that's correct so we can now see a nice crease you can draw this in if you want to but if you're careful then you can just go along that crease and just join those two lines up so that's now opened that up okay you're then going to need your iron because we need to neaten some edges and the first edges we're going to neaten these two front edges here and we're going to neaten the two um, sleeve edges as well so I'm going to flip it over. It doesn't really matter which is your right side and wrong side. It's pretty much the same anyway. And if you've seen me before, then I do like my wool pressing mat because if I turn over, you can do the same if you've got a fabric, um, if you've got a fabric um, ironing board cover. And then what I do is I, I turn over my quarter of an inch. You can't see because my hands are in the way. Um, and I then put a pin in to hold that still. there 
Usually three are down the front will usually be about enough is what I've found. And then what you can do then is take your iron and just give it a quick press in between those pins. And that just starts off the pressing process. You can take your pins out and then that's got enough memory in it then just to hold that flat for you and just to give that a bit of a press. So I'm going to carry on and I'm going to do the two sleeve edges and I'm going to do the other centre front as well. Just make sure that you're pressing them all to the to the same side if you like. You don't want one pressed that way and then one pressed the other way if you turn your fabric around. So make sure when you've got it lying flat everything all your seam allowed you know your, your pressed edge is going to be folded up towards you and then you'll know that you've got everything on the right side so i'll carry on and just press those and then i'll come back to you okay so here's mine pressed there's the two center front ones pressed here's one sleeve pressed and there's the other sleeve pressed let's just pop that to one side for the moment the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to take out our pins holding our necktie pieces together and we're going to make this into one long piece. So put your right sides together and your short edges are what we're going to be pinning because that's where we're going to be sewing in a moment. So we might as well just pin that and get that all ready. If you've got any creases you want to iron out of that, then you can just iron that whilst you're here as well and just get that all nice and flat. So that's just the short edges there just pinned together and again likewise with your shirt if there's any creases that you don't want in just just make sure you've got all of those because there's creases on the sleeves wasn't there and on the center back as well which we don't we don't need any more okay so once you've done that then i'd like you to um thread up your sewing machine with with white thread and then we'll be ready to, to get going on the actual stitching. I'll apologise in advance because you perhaps won't be able to see much when I'm actually stitching because it's white fabric on a white, white um, machine bed with a bright light underneath and with white thread. But we'll, we'll do our very best. Let's just start with the necktie first. And we're going to sew along here. So make sure you've got your uh, machine set up for a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I like to move my needle across towards this right hand side of the presser foot and then I'll use the edge of the presser foot as being my um, guideline. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, just to anchor our threads and put our needle in the work. We can then start to remove our pins. Just stop for your pins and then reverse at the end again. Needle out of your work and let's just cut our threads off. Okay, so there's our necktie now as one, one big long, long strip with the join in the middle. Just put that to one side for a minute because then we're going to go onto our shirt. And the first thing we're going to do is we've put that quarter of an inch memory into the edge of our um, shirt edge because we're now going to go and zigzag it. You can overlock it if you want to, if you've got an overlocker. But I think most people have got um, zigzag stitch on their sewing machine. So we're going to neaten this edge now and if we hadn't measured it f first, sometimes when you're neatening edges, the um, stitch, the width can bunch up a little bit with the zigzag stitch. So by putting that memory in first for our pressed line, when we're actually, I'm going to stitch this, open the, stitch it out. I'm going to open it out and then pop it down for my machine, but I'm going to change my stitch to a zigzag. I've got a width of four and a length of stitch length of two. So the zig and the zag width is four and then the stitch length is two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start on this edge here and we're just going to go down because by having that in there, even if the um, zigzag stitch bunches up a little bit, we've still maintained that this will end the right way when we, we neaten it off. So let's just go ahead and do these. And to save a little bit of thread, then we can find our other front and open that out and then go straight from one to the other. It's called chain piecing. We use it in quilting quite a lot. And then if 
find your sleeve. So really, you, you, you're zigzagging all of the um, edges that have been pressed over, that's all. And then we can then find the other sleeve edge and just do that. If you if you if this is confusing for you, then just do one seam first and then cut your threads, get your orientation, and then do the other one, and then work your new way through. And then I can snip in between the areas that we've sewn and that then gives us our separate pieces without having to cut off too much thread. The other thing that we want to do is cut off our starting threads and then have a little look along where you've zigzagged because I can see some whiskers along here. So just take those whiskers off now because it'll be much easier to do it now than it is once we've sewn this hem down and this all goes towards making a nice edge and look at the long ones just on there look you can see those hence there you can see them we're just going to take those edges off that's just where the, th the threads have started to to fray but this is why we're zigzagging it now we're neatening it off now if you've not got a zigzag stitch on your machine you can always use your pinking shears which are the ones with the zigzag blades on them and just neaten these off Because then with our muscle muscle memory, our seam memory with that ironed edge, all we need to do now is pop some pins in. I'm going to sew it from the top side. So you can just pop a couple of pins in just to hold it in place. Sometimes you don't even need to because cotton presses really well. So you might not even need to pin your seam first. But if you're nervous about it, do so. Take your stitch back off your zigzag stitch. And now we're just going to sew this seam down. I'm going to move my needle across to the left um, left hand side because that will give me a nice edge to run down and I'm not having to worry about. So by moving my needle across, I can position it so that it's much easier for me to keep straight and it doesn't wobble. When you're in the middle of this hole, um, the complete hole in the middle of that, it can be easy to wobble. Whereas if you move your needle to one side or the other, you tend to find your stitch a little bit straighter. Well, I do anyway, so um, that's the, the idea. So let's take a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back on that edge, put our needle in our work, just so that we can start and take our pins out when we're ready. And then we're just going to sew along here. And we're sewing, we're only sewing the sleeves. Don't sew the front, the, the, um, the front and the back, sorry, the two centre fronts. Leave those loose at the moment. So you just need in the sleeves. Reverse at the end there. And if you want to chain piece, you can bring your other one round. Make sure you're folding them both the same way. You lift up your presser foot, just line it up underneath. And then that ironed edge is just giving us a really nice crease to run along. And just reverse stitch at the end. Okay. So when we've finished doing that, this is what your shirt should look like at the moment. So let me take those starting threads off. So I've got the right side up at the moment. So we've got two, the centre front here that dissects this circle. We've got those neatened, but they've not been sewn down yet. And that's because when we, one of the final stages is to put these two bits together and then sew down part of the way. But we can't do that yet because it's too fiddly if we do it now. But for the sleeves, we've been able to neaten those edges and then fold them over and just um, tack that down with the stitches. So let's go on to our necktie next because that bit's there's finished. And what we need to do first is have our ironing board and our iron. And we're just going to press that seam flat first. And then we're going to open it up and open up our seam allowance too and press that seam allowance open. So that we've got that there. Okay. The next thing then that we're going to do is we are going to just put a quick fold into the length of this. So fold it so the long edges are together and then just go along and just give it a bit of a press just to hold those two edges together. 
This will help us with the next stage. Let's go down to the other side and do the same thing. Make sure they're on top of each other nicely. Just make sure that seam allowance is folded open for you. And just fold it up, just go all the way along. Because the next thing that we need to do now is just open it out for a second. Again, that muscle memory. And we're going to take our seam gauge and if we just take a pin that'll probably just help us so i put my measure along the um tie edge from that center seam where we've made it right in the middle of that center seam and just put a pin by three you put three the three inch mark because you want to make a quarter of an inch snip into that okay so i've got a quarter of an inch snip at the three inch mark and the pin just helps just tell you where you are so again let's put the pin in at three inches Measure back a quarter of an inch to make sure that's kind of in the right place. And then we're going to put that snip in again up to that pin. So that's so it's quite a big snip, but we'll see why we need that later. It's not just a notch, it's actually almost like a construction stitch, that, a construction notch that we need to do. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to do something to help us turn this out. Because remember, we're making this two inches longer. So we need something to help us turn this through. And what I've found that works really well is that if we get a piece of thread and we double it and we make sure that it's at least long enough well that piece isn't hold on a second <laughs> we make sure that it's at least long enough to go to the center point of the necktie from one end and then make it double that whatever that is double it so it's quite a long piece of thread So I'm using this fawny coloured one because it's one I got to hand. So it just has to be just ordinary dressmaking thread. It's just fine, just a different colour or whatever. A different colour is useful because then you know where you are. Then what I want you to do is, so we're on one, one edge here. And I want you to lay the thread down so that you've got a loop at the top end here. And that's kind of just got a few millimetres in between it. But then you're going to then lay that piece of thread down that creased edge that we've just sewn in, that ironed edge, and fold it over. So you want a loop in your thread at the top. Can you see, oh, I'm trying to get you to see that. So there's a loop just in there. And just for now, just pop, pop a pin just to kind of hold that loop open. That'll save you pulling it through when you don't want it to be. And then you can then pop your pins down the side here. Now this fabric is really nice and transparent being a lawn, but you can I can see the threads through. So make sure you've got a colour that you can see through because you want to make sure that you don't stitch over this thread. It's got to lie along the creased edge. I don't know if you can see that through there. Possibly not, maybe that way. But my thread is lying on the folded edge and then I'm pinning down the rest of it. And the ends of my thread will come out pretty much just, just a little bit after where that join is that we made earlier. And we want to put it, we're going to use the red pin trick because we only want to sew it down to our notch and then we want to stop. So let's go on to the, so let's do one side at a time because I can show you how to do it and then you'll then just repeat it for the other side. So let's go to the sewing machine now. And we've got that loop of thread. You need to have a, a bit, a couple of stitches worth of, of space between the two sides of the piece of thread because it's got to be caught over a couple. So I've just done mine like that. Look, just moved it. I don't think you can see that one well. But anyway, so there's my thread. It's got a it's got a gap in between those bits. And I'm going to put it into my sewing machine. I'm going to move my needle so that we are sewing it with a quarter of inch seam allowance. it on the edge of the presser foot and leaving the loop of the thread over the top of my fabric piece and then going to reverse at the start on that first corner so along to my second point and put the needle in the work and then we can try it I just need one more stitch by pivoting leaving the needle in the work and then twisting our work I can see I've got fabric at this side so I know I need to take one more stitch 
and then when I pivot now it's fine so I can leave the needle in the work that anchors the fabric down and now I'm going to go along one long side along here all the time just make sure that that thread that you've got down the middle is across onto the folded edge away from where you're stitching and we know I need to stitch up to my red um, pin and I'm going to reverse at that point needle out of the work and cut our threads and cut our starting threads as well. Just be careful you don't cut the loop of your thread because you want to leave that intact. So there's one. So go ahead now and you can, well you can just pull the um, threads down slightly just so that that is then, so if you pull on the length of your threads that loop will just disappear down onto your seam allowance because the next thing that we're going to do then is take off the corner just there and this larger corner here. So you're just going to take those edges off there just to reduce the bulk in the corner and you can't see the threads in them in in between there but it's not i've not snipped through that loop at all because we want to keep that intact so let's just push that loop out of the way so now what i want you to do is go go ahead and do the other side exactly the same stopping at the notch again at this you know that we've cut into it and then come back to me when you've sewn that and i'll show you how we turn this through so here we go we've got our corners trimmed off and we've got our long tie there, that's white thread. I've got some of my ties out that side and ties out that side. And then between the notches, we've got it open where the join was in the middle. And I've trimmed off the other side as well. Just before we turn this round, I just want you to go to your, your um, stitches and just, just press that. That just helps set your stitches where you've sewn. But then if we go to the seam allowance, I just want you to open that up as best as you can. It's fiddly on these little ones, isn't it? And just press each side open. Oh, trying to get in between the two. So just start it off and then you'll be able to just run your iron along. And just make sure you press that seam allowance open. Watch out if you've got steam on because that will just um, catch your fingers if you're not careful. Once you get it going quite often you're okay. On the side where it isn't notched Press your seam allowance all the way across because if you remember we only notched one side of the, the net, that, that band on the neck edge. So just carry that seam allowance being folded over a quarter of an inch all the way along. A bit there that's not quite folded over properly. And then repeat the same on the other side, on, on the other length of your, um, you see I've turned over a quarter of an inch here. So go ahead and do the same on the other. But then when you've done that, come back again and put the side that you've already ironed down on your ironing board and then fold the other seam allowance back. Because this will help you when you've turned it through. Oh, that was hot. Did you see me jump? I'll show you in a second what it looks like. You can do the same on the ends as well. So when we look at it, there's our seam line and our two seam allowances are folded back away from there because when we fold this round the other way, that'll help us get a nice crisp edge. So do the same on the ends and do the same on the other side of your tie and then we'll be ready for turning this through. The other thing to say is that on that neck edge, you want one side folded back to your quarter of an inch, but on the other side, don't fold it back, leave that standing proud like that so you can see one side is folded over the other side isn't then what we're going to do is starting one side at a time is find your two threads for the side that you're working with which is my side is going to be this one and then by gently pulling on those threads and holding onto the top of your tie 
you will see that the tie starts to fold in on itself at the end. And then just you just have to do a little bit at a time. You can't go, don't go too fast, otherwise you'll snap your thread and then we'll be turning it through the, the normal way. But if you just take your time and just keep sort of holding some pressure between your finger and thumb on the outside of the fabric, it'll all start to turn inside out for you as it comes through. And as once it's through, you can then pull on the actual piece of fabric itself. And then we're just going to roll this fabric between our finger and thumb. And because we've pressed those seam allowances open already, then this should now all start to sit nicely for us. So we should be able to see that stitching line and we want to take that out to that stitching line. And just give it a little press. So I'm pressing away from the end at the moment. The thread is still in there, but I'm going to take it out in a second. You can take it out straight away if you wanted to because we've finished with that side. Just make sure you're always working on the, the side that you've turned through. Don't take out the thread yet on the side you haven't turned through because you're going to need that. Okay. So once you get to the other side, let's just take that piece of thread out. So it's served its purpose. If it doesn't want to come out straight away, just snip it. Oops. That's it. And then what I tend to do is just get a pin and just pull out the ends of the ties just so that we're going back to that stitch. Make sure you get all your corners. Just take your time because otherwise you'll pull some fibres out and you don't want to do that if you can help it because you want nice neat ends to your tie. And then once that side's ready as well, you can just give that a press as well. So if you want to then go ahead and do the same on the other side, locate your other threads. And we're just going to pull on those just gently, just so it starts to, if, if, it, if it doesn't go through, you've probably got your hand too far down. You have to have your hand right at the very top. And then you can then Go through there. And just keep pulling it through. So exactly the same. I'm going to press this one open exactly the same way as we did the other one. Just remember that when you're sewing the open neck edge just here, one side of your seam allowance will be folded out and one side will be flat inside. And that's absolutely correct. That's the way it should be. And you'll see why. We're going to be doing that in a minute, so just make sure you can press that flat. Make sure we get to the edges here and roll them out through your fingers. I just can't resist getting hold of Hamish and just having a look and seeing how his new improved cravat is going to be. Because I think that that is already much better. Look at that. Just took it down into his neck. Yeah, very happy with that. And the, and the new dimension so that would be what I would say if you look at the dis difference between the width on the two of them then it's double just as we said we wanted it to be and that looks far more thespianish doesn't it with that longer time and the length is right as well I think by the time he's got his kilt round his waist and that'll be nice too okay we're happy to carry on then so the next thing that we're going to do then is going to start to put some gathering stitches around the edge of the neckline here and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're just gonna set our machine up for gathering this neck edge here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just change my bobbin, I'm nearly out of thread anyway, but we're just gonna change my bobbin for a different color because I do think it helps if you have your gathering threads in a different color. And the quickest one to change is just to change your bobbin thread. So I've just changed that over for this dark, dark navy blue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, shirt and we're going to run two rows of gathering stitches around this neck edge. One about an eighth of an inch in from the edge, so very tight, and one about three eighths of an inch in from the edge. So one will be inside the seam allowance and one will be outside. And then when we attach the actual shirt to the collar, we're going to... Um, so in between those two lines so let's get that all set up then so let's move my needle so i'm on a straight stitch so let's move my needle right the way across to to the seven point which is moved my needle right across to the right and i'm also going to make, take my stitch length up to 3.5 
Now when we're gathering, we don't want to gather this front edge where we've neatened it. So that's got that, that memory instilled from that ironed mark. So you can either just fold it over and then start to do your stitches. Don't reverse and remember that if you've got a machine that cuts your threads for you, you need to have long threads at the back so that you can um, gather this up. I'm gonna find my pedal. I know it's a bit squeaky, but we'll go for it. And we're just on, we're just pretty much just on that edge. And because we're not going to keep these stitches in, then we're just going to sew just around this edge. We can just go right up to the edge and we can pull the fabric almost straight in front of the presser foot, which helps us not have to pivot. Just be careful not to sew in any puckers. I've gone over one with my um, presser foot, but I've not actually sewn it in. When we get to this other side, let's fold that edge in as well and then we'll come right off the edge. about an eighth of an inch and you can see the dark thread there quite nice and easily so let's put our second row in so we're going to go just just below that line so we've got a gap in between our two rows of gathering and that's where we'll then stitch when it comes to actually putting the collar on don't let your stitch your stitching lines cross over because you won't be able to gather them if they cross over Doesn't matter if they're a little bit wavy, but just try and keep them as straight as you can. Okay. And leave, the, leave your ends as well. So you, you need the ends on both ends, the, the ends of the threads on both ends of these. Okay, let's just put that out of the way for the moment. Because the first thing we're going to do is just take our collar that we've got here. Remember we had that little bit of the seam allowance that was poking out underneath. Can you see just there and also along just there? And what we're going to do is we're going to put the collar, so let's have the right side of our shirt facing up, and then we're going to find our join line where we joined our two pieces of the collar together. And we're going to put that right on that centre back seam and we're going to put a pin in to hold that. Try not to go through your gathering threads if you can help it. Put my pins in. And then we're going to now go to this very first edge. Make sure it's folded in because we need it to be folded in. I've just gone over with one stitch. If you've got one stitch over your edge of your um, hem there, that what, what will be our hem, just undo it because you don't need that one there. Just use a pin. This will just help you just get behind it probably could do my glasses on but let's do that and then this edge here so the folded over edge goes right at the point make sure you've got no twists in your collar goes right at that point where that seam allowance had that notch cut in it so pop that straight on top there and pop a pin in just make sure that your raw edges are together And then we're going to go right across to the other side. So I've not gathered it up as yet. You can do if you want to. I just found this to be easier when I was doing mine because then I can see exactly where I am. So that's another pin in that end. So that's what you end up with. You end up with your collar with three pins in. And then you've got these gaps here where you're going to be gathering up your threads. The next thing then is separate out your thread. So I'm using this, this dark black well, I think it's actually navy blue, but it probably looked back on your screen. So just separate out those two dark threads. Oops. It can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but just do that if you can. And then they'll be twisted because that's the way the threads come off. So separate those out from the white. And then holding on to both of them at the same time with your fingers, you're then going to pull on the th on the fabric backward oh, well I'll pull on the threads but hold the fabric still and then it'll start to bunch up for you doesn't need to bunch up very much and then if you use your fingers you can just move those gathers down that those threads until we've got the collar the same size as the neck edge or the neck edge the same size as the collar I should say really and just move those gathers along with your fingers just to make sure that they're nice and even and you're only pinning through this seam allowance on the inside of that collar. 
you're not pinning through the collar, both sides of the collar and I'll show you why in a minute. So let's just put those raw edges together. Quite fiddly aren't they on these little garments but just take your time and you'll get there. And then we're going to now go across to the other side. So we've gathered one into the middle. So that's now the same edge. I've just got four pins in there but put in as many as you feel comfortable with. And then let's go to this side here now and we're going to separate out those threads. Sometimes using a pin can help. That's it, we've got those. Then we're going to pull on this side of the collar again. Sorry, on this side of the gathering stitches to gather up the neck edge so that it fits in line with the collar. You can tell I've had a, bit, a little bit of a break. I started doing this before the weekend and had a break over the weekend and my, my words aren't coming to me properly yet this morning. So let's get that nice and even. What you're trying to do is avoid any any um, flat spots in your gathers. So just try and just make it even all the way around as you can do. Just makes it sit nicely then on when it's on Hamish then, doesn't it? And gathering, gathering stitches can be a bit one of those things. You will get better the more you use gathering stitches. But at first it can look a bit intimidating as to how to get them exactly how you want them to be but just keep persevering with it and you you honestly will get there and I just use my fingernails then just to move those along and just to get those so that they're nice and even okay so once we've got that right let's put our raw edges together and put the pin in and just adjust as you need to Might need just one more just there, I think. Sometimes you need more and sometimes you don't. So then what we need to do is we need to keep this folded edge of the neck. So that's where we opened, if you remember, that's where the opening for the neck edge is. And one side was folded and one side was left flat. And we, we did the notches so that we could catch in the edges of our um, neck edge of our shirt. But in the end, what we're going to do is fold this back over and then we'll use this folded edge to cover all of this gathered edge. So don't include that in your stitching. Just have it on the back. And I think I'm going to put my gathered side... Normally, we'd, we'd um, sew with our gathered side up. But because I want to control this um, neck edge and it's very, um, it's a quite a narrow area to work with, then we're going to work with that on top. If you feel like you want to do it the other way around, you can do. Let's just take out this thread. Let's see if I can use the last bit on my bobbin. We'll play bobbin chicken just for a minute or two. And hopefully we can use up that little bit rather than throw it away. We go down and up again just to catch that second one. And what we need to do first is just make sure we've got our settings all back together again. So I want to take my stitch length back down to 2.2. And I need my position needle position back down to being 6.5. And that should give me my quarter of an inch seam allowance there. And we're trying to sew in between those two lines. But don't worry if you don't quite do it. We'll, we'll still take out those gathering stitches. So reverse stitch, start off with. And then needle in the work. And we can take our first pin out. Just make sure that all of your shirt edge is kind of lying at a right angle to your main edge. So all of your bulk of your shirt is down here. And that will help you when you're sewing it across. Get your pins out as you sew. Try not to sew over your pins. And just having that needle down in the work just helps anchor everything. So I'm nearly at the halfway point. There we go. And now I'm just going to just take time just to re-align re everything. Just make sure that all those gathers are all out to the side here and that we're all nice underneath this the, the end of this shirt for the gathers okay just a quarter of an inch seam allowance we're doing and we're going up to the folded edge of this side here of the neck edge so just pull that neck edge apart that side if you need to and then you should you, your stitches should kind of align right where your right where you did those notches. Let's take those threads off. Just be careful you don't take off the threads that you don't want to. We don't take the gathering threads out yet until we've inspected. 
So let's just have a little look now and see how we've done. So yeah, I can see they're all attached and we've got a good amount of the seam allowance there. That's all fine. And then what will happen is, this. see how this is, is folded edge now wants to go over and that will then hide all of those stitches inside there. So first of all, let's take out our gathering stitches. So you've already pulled on the dark thread, so it makes sense to carry on pulling. Let's take out the lower one first. It might break, that's fine. Quite often it does. And then let's do the other one as well. And then we can take out the, the bottom threads as well. They should just pull out. If they get stuck, just pull them as far as you can. So one's got stuck and then go to the other end and then pull from the other end and see how you get on with those. Yeah, that's all pulled out quite nicely. If it doesn't, just go as far as you can and then just snip your thread, your gathering thread quite close to it and you'll be fine. Okay, so this is what you end up with as your all your gathers in. The little pin pricks that you get in the right of the fabric, if you just either spritz it with some water or just use your fingernail, then you'll find that those um, holes in the fabric will just disappear. It's just where they've been um, cut, um, just gone through the fabric, but it, this fabric's very forgiving, so you should be fine with that. Okay, so once we've done that, then we'll be getting our little iron out and then we'll iron these this seam allowance up into the neckline and then we'll close it shut. So let me just get my iron and we'll do that. Okay, so the secret to ironing this, this seam allowance up into the collar is trying to lay things flat as you can. Now you have got your gathers along here, but you will get areas where you can flatten a bit out and then just use the nose of your iron to just push that seam allowance up. And you're just going to have to keep adjusting so that was the back that I've just done so let's now do across the shoulder just push all that in and then let's put now in against the front just use the nose of your iron just re re iron that because it's been a little while since I did that okay it doesn't take many minutes, it's the, as I say, they're just a little bit fiddly, but it'll just help you when you come to actually sewing it together. So that's the eye, that's the edge just pressed up. You can turn it over as well and do it from the other side. It might not be strictly necessary, but if you wanted to belt and braces, then you can do just to get it a nice, nice finish. And as I say, if you spritz it with water, those little, little pinprick marks should disappear out of your fabric, so that's my little trick that I've used before. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do, let me just move that mat out of the way so you can see against the dark green, I think it's easier to see, is the first place we're going to go to is the centre back of the neck and I want the actual seam line of the neck to go right on top of each other. So that's going to help that. And then we're going to just pop a pin in just along that edge. And then we're going to come now to the edges where we've got the seam allowance just pushing in. Just neaten that in there any raw edges or any little bits of thread can just get pushed up into there. And then we're going to put another pin just there. And this section here should just all fit in nicely. Put another pin in there if you want to. Just use as many pins as you're comfortable with, that's fine. And then again down here on this edge here, let's tuck that that edge there inside that little opening should be just nicely lined up just make sure the fronts of your shirt are folded over or oh, excuse the noises outside I think we've got some workmen into there and then just one more just over the top of the shoulder there as well just to hold that down so then what we're going to do is we're going to use a slip stitch and we're just going to stitch this now we're going to start here at one edge and then we're going to go all the way along and we're going to slip stitch the um, ed the folded edge of the collar down against the stitch line that we've done attaching the shirt to the collar and that should then that will neaten all of that edge inside so let me just get a hand sewing needle and I'll show you how we do that okay so for our slip stitch what we're going to do is we're going to first take a little bite out of the edge of the neck edge just so I've just folded back the folded edge of the neckline and we're just going to take a little stitch through, well quite a big stitch actually it's just, it's just to anchor our knot just to take a stitch through that section there 
of the neck edge and the collar and just do a double stitch there just to hold that in place. That'll just anchor down our knot and then you can choose the end of your needle depending on where your pin is to just push that end of the thread knot end inside underneath. And then on the very edge where the folded edge is just very carefully and neatly just do two little stitches just to anchor that edge just together and then we're going to take a little bite out of the stitch line for the collar for the shirt and a little bite out of the folded edge of the collar and take a stitch and that's going to start and then hold it hold everything down so let's do that again so a little bite out of the stitch line where the shirt was attached and then a little folded line. I'm going to take that pin out because we're holding it now with our finger and thumb. So now what I tend to do is I can loop underneath one of the stitches that was used to attach the shirt collar to the shirt and that actually gives you quite a nice little anchor point without going either too far or too less. So you're actually attaching the stitches to the stitch line. Hopefully you can see that without my fingers being in the way. And then probably every second stitch, just a little few fibres of the neck edge. Just keep tucking it under. And it just absolutely gives you a lovely finish. So one stitch through the um, stitches and one stitch through the little collar edge. And, it, and there we go, on this white thread and white fabric, it's almost invisible. So I'm going to do that all the way along this neck edge just to catch that down. And just to make sure that that's going to be nice and neat. There you go. And that's what it looks like from the right side. You can't see those stitches at all on the right side. And it's just attaching that. And all of the messiness of the gathered edge is all, all caught inside this collar. So I'm just going to sew all the way along here now. And then I'll come back and show you when I've finished. Okay, so once we've got our collar all neatly sewn down. Then that's how it looks from the inside. And that's how it looks from the outside. So pretty much the same. And that's the kind of effect you want, really. I mean, OK, you can see your little stitches um, along the edge on the inside. And we know the folded edge went through to the inside. And it's a good time to check that you've got both of your folded edges going through to the inside of your garment too for the next stage. Because um, once we've done all of that, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for where we hemmed our sleeves and we're going to put the two edges of the hems together. So you're going to make a circle with each sleeve. So let me just show you, you've got the, there's your hemmed edge all the way across there. We're not putting a sleeve to a sleeve, we're just putting the two edges of one sleeve together. And then get those right on the edge and then we're going to put a pin in to hold that together. The next place then I go to is to this right angle of the underarm or what's pretty much a right angle. And then I'll put a pin in just there. And then I'll go down to the hem edge and I'll put a pin in just there. That's Those are my starting points because that's the bit that we want to kind of just anchor down can see all of that so if I hold the shirt the right way round and that's how that's looking with those one two three pins in there because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew along here and we're going to pivot at this point here by leaving our needle in the work and change direction and then afterwards we're going to go along and we're going to neaten that with a zigzag stitch so I have filled up my bobbin again so that we didn't play bobbin chicken too too much didn't want any of you concerned so with a quarter of an inch seam allowance I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, and then needle in the work to hold that. I'm going to take out our first pin. And then we just carry along that seam. And I've got the pin at, at, at an angle through the uh, edge of the seam, so I can roughly see where I'm going to get to. So once we get close, we can just take out that pin. And we want to go a quarter of an inch into the, other, into the other side, and then with the needle in the work, we're going to leave the needle in, and then twist our fabric and then we'll be able to then come down this other side. Pin out at the end and reverse at the bottom. Move it out of our work. I'm going to do both sides exactly the same. So I'll just show you one side and then I'll go off and do the other one. And then we've got some threads here. Don't worry about those just yet. We're going to then ch change onto our zigzag stitch. And we're going to have a width of four and a length of two. 
and then starting at the edge just there and I'm just going to zigzag it over this edge you can overlock it if you wish when you zigzag just make sure that if you're stopping to pivot you leave you have your fabric at your needle in your fabric then down the other side starting and stopping threads Put in the bin. and then where you've got any whiskers I just like to go along and just just take those off as well some places you have more than others just try not to cut through your stitching threads your zigzag stitching threads when you do this but it does just help neaten that edge up a little bit more okay and then once you finish that where your point is here You've got a, your right angle in that seam. You just want to take your scissors and you just need to do a snip towards that pointed edge. Don't go through your stitches, but up to, but not through your stitches. And it just releases that seam allowance for when it's turned around. Because then the next thing that we're going to do is then turn this around to the other side. And then what I want you to do is, where you can see that little bit of seam allowance there sticking up where we've just sewn, Work out which is the back of your garment and I want you just to flatten that to the back of your garment. And then either by hand or by machine, let's take it off the zigzag stitch first. I want you to just put a few stitches through that seam allowance. It's a little bit tight, so just be careful, but you can normally flatten it down so you can get to it. And you're just going to stitch, put a few stitches in along that hem just to hold that seam allowance down. So just take those out and I'll when I've done it I was going to say I'll show you both but I've not got to that point yet but it just holds that seam allowance down so that when Hamish is wearing his shirt that seam allowance isn't going to pop up and get in the way so now I want you just to go back to the other side fold your sleeve over it and just repeat that same process exactly the same on the other side of your shirt and I'll meet you back here okay so now that we've got those bits sorted out we can then take this um sorted out once we've got the, the seam allowance pressed in and you can see now we've got a shirt that's actually starting to take shape from that strange shape that we cut out we can now see that this is all coming together so the next thing that we're going to do now is just going to put the right sides together along that center front and we're going to just tuck your sleeves in for the moment and just put a pin at that bottom edge just to hold that together and for this I have folded out those the edges so it's the zigzagged edges that I'm putting together and then with the seam gauge we need to me measure about three three and a half inches we're going to put a pin in at that point there because we need to leave a gap for Hamish to get his head through and so this is the bit that we're going to sew so we're going to try and sew in that little crease that we left with the ironing mark and it's just a straight stitch and we'll reverse at the stop and we'll reverse at the beginning of, uh, at the start and we'll reverse at the stop as well so let's just do this couple of stitches forward couple of stitches back and then needle in the work and then take our pin out just hold on to your threads at the back because sometimes the lawn does get pulled down into the plate because it's so fine a little bit of tension on the back there just seems to help that just all come through and try and follow that quarter of an inch seam allowance. When you get close to your pin, just take out your pin, a couple more stitches forward, and then reverse. And needle out of the work. And then you're going to need your iron again. Because what we're going to do now, just put that out of the way for the moment, is we're going to press all of this flat. So this seam is going to be pressed open. That's the centre front now and the two side seams are both going to be pushed towards the back. So let me get my ironing board and we'll show you how we do that. So I've just put my shirt down onto the ironing board and I've put the centre front down first because we'll just run it on that centre seam first just to get that all nicely pressed. So I've got the right side of my shirt facing out and then I can put my iron on the inside here and just press that seam down. And then we're going to go to the two side seams now and we're going to press those towards the back up to the underarm and this one here is going to go that way then that's we always press those side seams to the back 
that are going to give that really nice and neat. And then we're going to need some pins again and you're going to need a measure because we're going to now measure over our quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to start on the back here, measure a quarter of an inch and then pop your pin in to hold that out of the way. Just so this is just so you don't pit, um, iron your fingers while you're trying to hold down these really narrow hems. And I just find just pinning into my wool pressing mat is a great way of doing this. So there we've got across the back look. So now I can just go in with my iron and just press that down. Give it a little blow just to let it cool off. It doesn't take long. And then we're going to move on to these side bits. So again, we're going to press those quarter of an inch. I'm going to do this all the way around And see where you joined on before so that's nice and easy there's a little bit of curve to the book to this hem but it should all just you just keep pressing it up at quarter of an inch it should all press nicely for you use as many pins as you need just to control it for you whilst you're ironing or pressing really isn't it we're more pressing than ironing and then once we've gone all the way round we're going to zigzag that hem first like we did on the front and then we're going to fold it back up again to the memory of where the seam is and then we're going to then just put a hem stitch in just like we did down the um on the sleeves so just exactly the same as we did with the sleeves and that will then give us a nice neat edge and we'll make sure that when we zigzag it we don't then lose our quarter of an inch seam allowance will take up more than we should be. I've got a very drunk iron. I broke one of the legs off it. First week I had it by dropping it, which wasn't ideal. And it just means that it now has a tendency to roll to one side. So if you see me grab for it every now and again, that's why, because I've got visions of it rolling over and burning something. Okay. So that's all ready, that's got our hem on the bottom there all done. So I'll fold this out, zigzag all the way through first and then I'm going to fold it up and then straight stitch through that hem and just hold it down, as I say, exactly the same way as we did for the sleeves. And when I'm zigzagging like this, I t I'm, I'm starting and stopping, I wouldn't start and stop at the front, at the centre front because it's a bit noticeable right just there. I usually put it at the side seam or the centre back seam. If it's on the skirt, then I tend to use the centre back seam. But if it's um, a shirt, then I tend to use the, the side seam. So you leave your needle in your work and just make sure your needle's in your fabric when you stop. We're going to trim off those whiskers as well like we do on the side seams when we're neatening those. Just keep rolling the fabric round and the shirt round and make sure you've got your back bit tucked out of the way. Do a swoosh, just swoosh that back fabric out of the way. Make sure you don't get it caught in your zigzagging or in your hem. And if your zigzag stitches just go over each other just by a couple, then that's fine. Don't need to do any more than that. Needle out of the work. Let's take off our starting and stopping threads. Take off some of these whiskers. Don't want those coming out, do we? Well, while Hamish is wearing his lovely shirt and spoiling the look. Just as if taking the time just to do these little bits that just elevate your stitch stitching as well and just give you a really lovely finish that you can be proud of. That's why I think about it anyway. So I think it's always worth the effort just to get those bits all sorted. Okay, so back onto a straight stitch now. Move my needle across, so I've got that all. And then I'm going to put the right side of the, the fabric down against the machine. I'm just gonna fold over that hem. I don't think I need any pins, but if you feel like you do, then have some pins to hand. 
I'm just going to pop that under the edge of the machine. A couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And needle in the work just to hold it all down while we just fold it over. And then a little bit of pressure on that hem should just keep it straight for me. Just stop and then just do a couple more inches. Just keep stopping and rearranging. I hope you don't go off off um, kilter then. If it starts to not want to fold too much, just lift your presser foot up and just get underneath it. It just means you've gone a little bit further than you perhaps could have done. And then that just allows you then just to rearrange it to the quarter inch to the ironed mark. Nearly finished. And here we are to the start. Make sure the threads are out of the way. Just reverse on that side seam. Threads off really close. And then I've actually finished all of the stitching up because you have one very lovely shirt here for Hamish to wear with his super long ties. So, shall I just get Hamish and we'll just try this on him and see how this works? And we can check this three and a half inch neck opening as well, can't we, for it? Okay, so this is my second Hamish that I made for my friend. Let's just pop his horns through there. Doesn't it? And his ears need a little bit of manoeuvring. And his hair, of course. Get his nose through. That's it. Yes, that goes through nicely. So for, for my characters, that's fine. And then let's try the sleeves. And I just want to just sort of take the sleeve up a little bit further so we can get all the ruffles out of his fluff and bring that down. And then let's do the other one. You're not smart in this, Hamish. Okay, let's just stand and sit him up so you can see, hopefully. Okay, so let's just put it down on his back. And if you want to, you can just fold that, that collar over if you want to at the back. It's more about the, having the extra length and the width at the front, wasn't it? Just make sure that's sitting nicely on his shoulders and on his back. And then this goes round to the back. Still going to fold it, I think. So it makes his like his cravat. And then bring it round to the front because it's this bit at the front that we wanted it to be kind of quite nice and full, wasn't it? Look at that, how much better is that sitting? Just do your hair, Hamish, hey? With that lovely floppy fringe going on. Okay, I'm really, really happy with the length of that. Obviously, you can look from these pictures and see what you prefer. If you don't want your ties quite as long, I added two inches onto each one. You could perhaps add an inch and a half or an inch just to give you yours. But the pattern alteration is really easy. The sleeves fit nicely. I'm just bringing Hamish number one to show you the, alter the difference between the two. So here's number one look, much shorter and much narrower. And here's number two with the thicker ties that go down just past his waist. Um, so yeah, as I say, I, I feel that's much more of a luxurious look on his shirt there. And that would certainly take like a little decorative tie pin or something, wouldn't it, in the front there. Whereas this one, you're really going to struggle. What I am going to do, if you just hang on for a second before I turn round and round up, I'm going to talk to you about how you can change... If you've already made your Hamish like this one, following the original pattern, and you prefer the look of this one, I'm just going to talk you through how you would change that over because, you know, we're going to have these characters on our, on our shelves for a long time and if we're not happy, then we might as well um, show you how we change it. And, and, and it, sometimes these changes are easy to do as well. And I certainly prefer the look of this one. So I will be changing this shirt so that I've got two the same. So have a look now because you won't see this one again. 
um i will be will be altering it for this one but just hang on in the in the um in the video for now and i'll do that first before we go to the roundup but if you've been just making the first one and you like the way that this is and you can just skip ahead straight away to the roundup Okay, so if you want to change your necktie over from the narrow straps to the thicker one that I showed, first thing you're going to need is a new um, pattern piece. And I've just done mine out of tracing paper that you can get from any art shop. I'm just going to go over these details again, just in case you're jumping straight into this bit. So the measurements that you need is two and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So two and a half inches this way and eight and a half inches this way, or 6.5 centimeters, which is the same as two and a half inches by 21 and a half centimetres, which is the same as the eight and a half. So it's just depending on which measurements you prefer. And then what I've done is I've marked the fold line on one side here, and you actually then need to cut out two of these. So you need two exactly the same size and both marked with a fold line. So then once you've got your pattern pieces together, and I've written on their necktie, one of two and two of two, because you need to have two. If you go back to your original piece of fabric, and if you remember, we cut this out so that we'd got um, the maximum amount saved that we could, we can probably get one necktie yep, out of this section just here. So what I'm going to do is fold that one in half until we get to the length that we need. We'll have that on the fold. that on just there that uses that piece up quite nicely doesn't it and then pin it onto our fabric and then we're just going to cut that out that way and then we're going to find another place on our fabric where we can cut out an identical one as well so that we've got two at this new pattern piece size so that's what you need to do you can then follow the instructions once you cut out that one and once you've cut out your second one on the fold as well cut those out and then we're going to go to our original shirt here and we're just going to undo our hand stitching on the inside and then we're going to undo the machine stitching that's holding this these gathers in and holding that neck edge on so we can do all of that now straight away and then we can discard this piece of fabric the next thing i want you to do then is with your two pieces of necktie make them up in exactly the same way as this original one was made but obviously it'll end up thicker and then we're going to then put in new gathering stitches around the neckline and then we're going to then attach our necktie exactly the same way find our set into notch and put the seam at the back um, you're going to leave a little flap of your seam allowance poking out so that you can sew just rewind the video if you need to rewind it and have a look and then we're just going to attach it in the same way. Your only tricky bit is that you're now in the round because you've sewn up your centre front seam and that wasn't sewn on before. That wasn't sewn up. But I think that you've got enough room to move around here. And if you take your time and just keep your sleeves out of the way and just roll it round as you're sewing it on your sewing machine, you'll be able to then get that one back on again. Once you've done that, just press everything up into the neck edge and then slip stitch it shut and you'll have your new neck necktie onto your shirt. So you're basically just going back to the beginning um, and following some of the steps. As I say, it's just that you're in the round now without this section, but you do need to have your new pattern pieces drafted and cut out first in order that then you can put that onto your existing shirt. Okay, that should help you hopefully. Uh, as I say, rewind the video if you need to just to have more details, but that should be able to help you there. So I've just finished changing the other shirt now as well. So I've taken off the old one. And hopefully you can see that you, you, don't, you can't tell that that's actually been altered at all. And that's going to then be lovely on Hamish then for wearing um, with his kilt, which will be next on my list to do. So let me just turn this camera around and I'll do the roundup. And so I just want to show you, oops, if I don't drop them both, there are two lovely Hamishes now, both in their lovely um, shirts with the two, um, with the thicker and longer ties. And, and hopefully you can kind of say that you wouldn't notice the difference between the two, even though one's been altered. So I hope you've enjoyed stitching along with me and learning about how to alter the pattern 
for this so if something's not quite as you want it to be then you know you can go ahead and alter the pattern like that and and hopefully I've demystified some of that process for you um, if you have enjoyed the video then I'd be really grateful if you give it a thumbs up because any interactions with my posts and my videos really do help to promote my channel and to other viewers um, YouTube then takes its content that's worth watching and that's what happens and also if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment as well then I'm always glad to hear and let me know which version of the tie neck that you prefer and whether or not you're going to redo yours and find a um, and put a new what new tie collar onto yours or not so anyway that's it for today folks I hope you've enjoyed and I'll speak to you soon on behalf of the two Hamishes and I we're going to say happy stitching and have a great day take care everybody bye